It's been a great pleasure rediscovering JavaScript. Hi, my name is Venkat Subramanyam, author, consultant, and trainer. I've been using JavaScript for well over 20 years. I rediscovered the modern features of JavaScript and loved it so much that I captured it in this book, Rediscovering JavaScript. JavaScript has so many respectable features, it's learned a great deal from a lot of other languages over the past few decades. Let me share with you some of the exciting features that I've covered in this book. Well, let's say we are interested in making a copy of an object and maybe altering one of the properties. Well, one easy way to do this probably is to simply say, let's say older Sam right here, and then equal to, and we'll start copying every single property. Name, first of all, we can say Sam.name, and then of course, age is going to be Sam.age, maybe a plus one to increase the value of the age itself. Well, you can see right here, we have an older Sam, and we can print out the older Sam right here. While this worked, unfortunately, there's an issue with this code. Suppose we add a new property, let's say height to the Sam object. The older Sam, unfortunately, is not going to have that value as you can see. Well, sometimes less is more. We can actually make use of some wonderful features in JavaScript. For example, right here, we are making a full copy of the object and only modifying in the copy one property. We can also add more properties like this as well. Well, a mixture of different ideas come together to make this code work, as you will learn from the book. Well, what if you're interested in working with an array? Well, obviously we want to access elements of the array often. Well, how do we go about doing just that? Well, here's an array called names, but I want to get to the first element. Well, oftentimes we use the ceremonious syntax of square bracket zero. But why can't we make it really fluent like first? But unfortunately that doesn't work. But we don't have to take no for an answer. We can use metaprogramming. We can say object.define property. And in this case, we are going to in insert a property called, what but where to? Into the array's prototype. And in this case, the property is going to be the first property. And we're going to inject that property into this particular object. And the way we're going to do that is to providing a get method. And in this case, we will simply return the current object square back at zero. So we are providing a very fluent syntax to make that work. Well, that didn't take a whole lot of effort. That's method injection. There are several other ways to inject methods as well. But in addition to this, metaprogramming allows us to do method synthesis as well. If you're curious about it, you can learn about it in the book. Well, but what if I'm really interested in working with classes? JavaScript has phenomenal feature for working with object-oriented code. Well, OO is something that's been around in JavaScript for a long time. The semantics stays the same, but the syntax is a lot more elegant. Here's an example of creating a bunch of classes. My array extends array, my string extends string. We got two objects of the array. But let's start by creating an object by concatenating the array to itself. Curious, what kind of object are we getting? Aha, that's a my array. We could ask the question, is it an instance of my array? And the result is, of course, true, it is. On the other hand, if I take a string and concatenate the string with another string, the question is, is it a, really an instance of my string after all? Notice that the difference between the two. While we concatenate an array, my array, we got a my array. While we concatenated a my string, we did not get a my string. Hmm, what's happening here? If you're curious about this, and also how to really make code like this behave for your own classes, I cover a lot of those ideas in rediscovering JavaScript. Hope you would consider reading this book. Thank you for your time.